Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Good real. Bitcoin's here to stay, Bitcoin? and you need to be a part of it. So what we're going to do to start, I might know Apple on the panel, you might just know a few familiar faces, is we'll start with some brief introductions of everyone. Why don't we start with Crypto Jack? Yeah, we'll start with Jack. <laughs> Hello, my name is Crypto Jack, also Jack. And uh, yeah, I've been in Bitcoin now for around about four years. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. But uh, yeah, I was buying Bitcoin at around about $1,500 to $2,000. I had a small dropshipping business, which I sold back then, and I put it all into Bitcoin, and I got 10 Bitcoin, which um, back then it was around $20,000, but now it's, it's obviously a lot more. So ever since then, I've just been buying Bitcoin as much as I can, talking about it on my YouTube channel to around 200,000 people, and then you know, just documenting my journey, uh, posting trade setups and stuff like that, and just enjoying the crypto website. Hello, well, my name is Dimitri Jeremy. I'm a software developer and now a crypto enthusiast, and uh, I have a YouTube channel called Dimitri J15. Uh, the J15 was just a, a username that I thought, I was going to take my username because, you know, I'm not really famous or anything, but uh, yeah, I'm now famous for the guy, the guy who bought Bitcoin at $1 and told everybody to buy some and uh, no one listened. So that's what I'm pretty much known for. Hello, my name is Chris from Evan Crypto. I uh, have a YouTube channel. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, and all of these things. So YouTube, I post once a day at least. Mostly I talk about Bitcoin, and about Ethereum, macroeconomics, about my own project we launched. And um, yeah, if you want to follow me, it would be beautiful. It's amazing to see so many people here. These meetups keep getting bigger as the price is going lower, so that's a good sign. It's a bullish divergence. <laughs> and yeah, I'm very happy about that. Happy to mingle and talk with everyone here afterwards if you want. And um, yeah, cool to talk about crypto here. Thanks. Morning, I'm Sammy. I run the Fourth Flies YouTube channel. I have a crypto derivatives trader, so it's primarily trading Bitcoin on average. Uh, and I also run a YouTube channel with a completely no BS approach, only about the truth. It's uh, in trading is difficult, and uh, and we break it down to its fundamentals. Uh, that's kind of, that's what you'll need to come. Thank you. So hi, I'm Jay from Dusty C for good channel. I cover mostly all coins on there or yield strategies nowadays as well. Just some trading every year and there. I've been doing it for a couple of years, also for a big Instagram business, so about 100 million followers on my accounts combined, about 450 of them. And uh, I recently kind of went away from that fully into crypto. It's been a beautiful journey for sure. Hello there, um, my name is Jessica. I've been in crypto since 2017, before that I worked for a Swiss bank. And then I joined the fun side, the crypto side. Uh, I launched a coin market Cats YouTube channel in summer of last year. And since then I've just been working with individual products and also in the crypto event circuit here in Dubai. And I'm curious now to ask some of you guys in the audience, who is new to crypto this year? Oh, okay, no, 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 we have one, yeah, okay, cool. Um, I want to see, who got into crypto in 2050? How early are people in the space? 16? No. 2016, 2017? Nice. 2018? 2019. Okay, cool, amazing. So it's been a good turnout. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn to Da Vinci and just start with the view and ask you how you got into crypto. Because I think people's crypto journeys are always a very interesting one. Yes. Okay. So yes, um, I I got into crypto because uh, I started a YouTube channel because I realized that our monetary system was a, a fraud. It transfers wealth from the poor to the middle class to the rich. And um, 
and it does that for inflation. And I figured that, you know, um, I would tell my family and friends and say, okay, they would obviously see this and, you know, make some changes in their lives. And they all thought I was crazy. They thought, what are you talking about? But do you think the government's going to steal from us? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, they didn't believe that uh, basically um, the government prints money when you, oh, well, not just the government, it's actually banks that print money. And when you go into debt, and so they lend the money to you know to the government, and they point a gun at you and say, "Hey, give me your tax money to uh, pay the bank, which printed the money for free." So that effectively makes you a slave. Now, um, I, I wanted to to, uh, to do my YouTube channel to make sure that people would protect themselves with gold and silver and any other asset that would go up during the inflation that was shortly to come. And uh, so I did that, and I, I had an expectation of just saving one person financially, and that's it. And I didn't expect to be like majorly famous or people to care. Uh, but you know, that channel slowly began to grow, and then one time, one day, somebody said, Hey, Lucy, what do you think about Bitcoin? And I looked at it, the website, and thought, Scam. Yeah. There's no way that it's going to work. Right? And I'm a software developer. I'm going to read the source code. I actually remember typing that back out to the guy. I'm a software developer. I'm going to read the source code to prove to you how this is a big scam. And when I read the source code, I realized, oh yeah, this is good work. Oh my god. And my, I bought my first Bitcoin for actually 67 cents, actually. And uh, I, I, got, uh, I actually got it on a website quickly with PayPal. It was amazing. And yeah, uh, I've been uh, preaching it ever since. I even have a, a, a video where I was trying to convince my new, my subscribers who were all hating for talking about Bitcoin that hey, if if you put a thousand dollars into this and it goes to zero, I'll pay you back. I have money here with gold and silver. I'll pay you back, and only five people took me up on that offer. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what about you? What was the initial question? <laughs> ah, yes. uh, I got into crypto into Bitcoin first in the beginning of 2017, just a few years later than I did. It was expensive. Um, I was studying economics, driving a taxi while I was studying, and saving money on the side. Right, I was like a crazy party guy before, and then I started studying and like working in a taxi, putting everything aside, working on the weekend and. Whatever I saved, biggest part of that I put into crypto and uh, the remainder I left in fiat to be able to survive for like 10, 12 months because I also started YouTube and I thought it's usually a longer process, you can't make money just like this. So it happened to be that it took me exactly 12 months to make my first dollar there because it was a very slow process in the very beginning. And um, yeah, ever since then I... Um, started accumulating as much Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on as possible, uh, grinding every single day. I wouldn't say grinding hard, but very consistently. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's the story in short. I mean, basically for me, it was very easy to understand the beauty of Bitcoin because I was studying economics and I knew about the flaws of the monetary system. Actually, my professor was teaching me macro and microeconomics. He was a former central banker, former central banker in the European Central Bank, and he hated it, so he quit and taught us students actually how bad it is and <laughs> that they are printing all the time. And that, like he was laughing about the inflation rates of two percent; they are much higher. Like an awesome guy, um, and I was really wondering why he was in science at the university. But anyways, I think I was very happy to get this one guy out of a thousand eight and get him on my YouTube channel. Um, anyways, then when I found Bitcoin, it was very easy for me to understand, hey, it's like similar to gold, but it's more divisible, it's and transferred across borders. Um, there's like literally no middleman now in Germany, if you want to buy more than five or 10,000 euros or something, you have to register. Um, and that was beautiful, so I knew it's like Bitcoin and gold on steroids. And um, yeah, I saw that it was still a very low market, a huge potential. That's how I got in, and once I made profits, I started with the YouTube channel very shortly afterwards. And yeah, once again, it took me 12 months, and now it's like five years ago, we are sitting here, all being happy, or hopefully not depressed in the bear market. But yeah, that's, that's my story in very short.
So I wish my story was as virtuous as the other gentleman here, but I got in just to make money uh, in 2017. I was 15 years old. I had no idea about the political and philosophical ideologies of Bitcoin. Uh, I think like most people, I kind of had to learn that after I joined. Uh, and, and I only learned it because I wanted to make money from the market. And I think that's how a lot of people do it. You know, like they, they originally get in just for the speculative gain, but as they kind of sift deeper and deeper into the space, uh, you'll naturally start reading about it. You'll naturally start being more aware of all the bad things that happen with the existing system. And, uh, and you know, if, if you read a book like the Bitcoin Standard, you'll set it, you'll, you'll fully get it. So, uh, I got in back in 2017, very, very young, and uh, yeah, I was just looking to, uh, to, to trade the markets. I was absolutely horrendous for the first year, it was disgusting. Uh, I would jump on every altcoin, because there was, to be fair, it was pretty easy back then, just jump on any altcoin that had upcoming news, and you know, in the three days leading up to that, you do see a little bit of a pump, and the rinse repeat. Uh, but I, I lost all of my caps multiple times, uh, I had to keep putting more money in. Uh, it was only pretty much a year after that uh, where I decided to really just pull my stuff together, uh, get serious about it, and, uh, and stop looking for shortcuts as a trader, um, and, and really wise up. Uh, and it was kind of around that time where I started to read a lot more. That was the bear market. That was the 2018. That was the beginning of the 2018 bear market. That's where you start reading more. Uh, it was the people in rooms like this who, uh, you know, when the price wasn't so exciting anymore, who were still educating themselves. That's generally where you see the kind of next generation of crypto millionaires. Uh, I, I went to you know, all sorts of kind of events like this back in 2018 when it was absolutely boring, and I can't think of anyone who did that because it's now wildly successful by a lot of measures. So that's how I got it. So I would say my story is significantly different. I've actually been on YouTube since I think. I was 10, so maybe 2000, a long time ago, I think. And I started my Instagram business in maybe 2017 or 18. And what I learned is I, I bought Bitcoin when I was like 13 somewhere, just because in class, in school, high school, we were all talking about the dark, like I'm going to try. It didn't really work because it gets scammed a lot. Later, I always got these messages on Instagram of, hey, uh, we want to buy promotions, but we can only pay in crypto and so forth. Uh, would you like to get paid in crypto? And I always got up for Bitcoin. Didn't really understand exactly how that was supposed to work or so. And I was always like, no, nah, no, I don't want to take that off. One day I looked at a YouTube video. It was about Bitcoin. It was like 2016. I was like, okay. And the guy was doing a giveaway. So I put, I made a new wallet. I put my address in there. I actually went. And that was, I think, 0 0.01 Bitcoin at the time. And then I transitioned my YouTube channel from doing whatever I was doing at the time, some game and stuff to just talk about my journey from basically having zero dollars to getting a giveaway and then working on crypto in that sense further. And so I used to do a lot of these high yield investment programs that were big committed. It was a lot of fun uh, at the time. <laughs> no, I mean, it didn't really work out well, but a lot of things were really fun at the time. And I would say that the space has changed so much. Well, right now, there's still a lot of garbage out there, but back then it was really niche. So it was like, I went to school, high school was like, not that many people talk about it. It's not a normal thing. And now, you see really a lot of people with a Bitcoin shirt and stuff like that. It's, it's like, change real quick. But I think it's a really beautiful thing because the more you're into it, the more you're noticing all the, the beauty that's out there. And I really love the journey. It's a lot of fun. And I got to meet these beautiful people. Yes. So it's, it's a lot of fun. I think. Amazing it connected passion, by the way. That was. Uh, yeah, so my journey began in 2017, as I said before. Uh, before doing YouTube or crypto or anything like that, I was actually uh, a pilot. I was doing my training to become a pilot, and then I had to uh, save up like around 20 to 30,000 euros to uh, pay for my training to, to work for Ryan. And uh, yeah, so I started a business, a uh, dropshipping business, selling animal like pet products online, shipping from China to direct customers. And um, yeah, I had enough of doing this like girly, trivial stuff. So I sold this company and, um, and then I put this money into, into Bitcoin back in 2017 when it was like between 1500 to $2,000. 
And um, yeah, I mean, since then I've just been putting as much money into Bitcoin as possible. Dollar cost averaging like over the years. Um, in 2017, I did actually lose a lot of money in uh, scams, like you said, like uh, these different ICO projects that they would do really well. And then I just, I don't know, I just forgot to take my money out and it just went like 99% down. And uh, also a lot of old coins in 2017 as well. Um, I know probably a lot of people here maybe still holding some bags. Yeah, uh, it happened to me, and uh, you can just learn from it and go on in the future and just make sure you don't make any mistakes. That's how I got into crypto, and now I just document, try to every day on YouTube about my journey, about helping educate people in crypto. Um, yeah, that's my story. Interested, you three got away from the used to be a pilot. You're like, we've been paying pilots to fly our private jets, and Jack could have done it all along. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> See you guys, you guys be a master, amazing. Now, I'm sure you all have a lot of questions for the people on the panel, and we will get around to as much of them as possible. So, what we'll do now is actually we'll go quickly through the projects that these guys are working on, and in that time, we'll make sure to think of some questions so we can. Yeah, so one thing I'm actually very passionate about is helping people, uh, especially in crypto, not pay any taxes. So as you know, if you're from Europe, America, wherever it may be, it's, uh, taxes can be extremely difficult and nobody wants to pay them. So uh, I actually partnered with my friend Rafael, he sat there with a huge big one t-shirt on. And uh, yeah, both, both, uh, yeah, stand up. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so what we're doing is helping people uh, move their business to Dubai and also helping them to give a uh, certain aspect of freedom by getting passports uh, by investment. So if you're in like uh, Europe or America or wherever it may be, or Australia, and uh, or even if you're resident there and you're just visiting in Dubai, then we can help you like set up your company here and reduce your tax bill to hopefully zero or as little as possible. And hopefully then the money you save on tax, you can put back into crypto and make more gains. So yeah. The website is uh, wealthyexpat.com. I love that, that's very cool. Hey, uh, I'm uh, working on my own uh, NFT. It's called Davitar. Uh, you can go to it at davitar.com. And as an owner of my NFT, you can get uh, special access to, to me. And also, uh, you know, I'll be giving away lots of different uh, 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 prizes and stuff like that. Uh, with that um, avatar. So, for example, uh, the NFT will have like different properties that will be special, and you will win a special prize depending on what the property is. So, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, there's only going to be 9, 915 of them, so not very many. So, if you're interested in getting the avatar, you, you uh, have to sign up at devitar.com. Uh, yeah, beautiful. Um, I can talk quickly about two projects. The first one is Deloge, and many of you guys know. And uh, we unfortunately had the perfect timing to launch on the top of the bull market, but whatever. Um, it was beautiful. We gave out all tokens to the community for free. And it's basically a launch pad for metaverse projects, for um, all kind of very good projects who want to get exposure to the community. So the community gives them the exposure and we turn it free at the other locations. Everyone who's holding the launch we had stays the token, gets free at the other locations, free at the free allocations, and stake the rewards. So it sounds like no downside, it is no downside, um, but of course if you bought on top of the bull market on the secondary market, obviously the price went down, right? Um, anyway, we are working hard on it and uh, pushing forward. We have then a few launch coming and um, a few other juicy things. The second project is actually Crypto for Schools. The first one was vlaunch.com, the second one is Crypto for the number schools.com. And um, yeah, my ambition is, I'm doing it with more. My ambition is to build a thousand schools for kids around the world. And we already built one in Ibiza, two in Mexico, one in Kenya. And now I'm working on a project in South Africa and one in Copacabana, my favorite place in the world. And every now and then we raise funds, put the money ourselves, 
some gentlemen already donated as well, which was very beautiful. And um, yeah, so now it goes slowly, but the goal is in the future to scale it up and to make it a thousand schools around the world where we teach kids not only the basics of calculation and um, language and writing and stuff, but also a little bit of spirituality, meditating, um, peace of mind, joy, love, and so on. Um, we want to make it a little bit better as I was always really disliked in school. I mean, I was really bad. Uh, they threw me out of school, so I had to change school for the last year. I dropped out of three universities. It's just not, not such a nice system, especially for kids who don't get taught the right values. So um, that's what we are aiming to do in our huge network of schools. So my main uh, project I'm working on actually the project uh, the main thing that I run uh, is a trading. How do I say so it's like an insight into what it is to be a real trader. Uh, as a derivatives trader, like I said, it's very difficult. Uh, it's not easy, and uh, I offer a very intimate view into what that looks like with all of the challenges, all of the, the positive things. Uh, almost, I don't like going into demons, but like the kind of demons you've got to fight as a trader. Uh, and then how my decision making process evolves uh, throughout, you know, from, from going from the analysis stage to the I'm going to consider this trade, to, okay, I'm going to trigger on this and then pulling out. It's, it's all of the nitty gritty that goes on with the engine of trading. Uh, and I offer that insight for myself. So uh, a lot of people might want to uh, see how that looks for uh, you know, someone who genuinely does trade the market uh, you know, quite actively. And uh, that's why I'm looking forward alongside that. I just generally will uh, also run a, a course educating people on everything from A to Z on, on trading, which I mean, you can be a chef and pick up the course. Uh, and at my knowledge level, uh, it's very, very thorough. We've had insane results. And, uh, and it's all about, yeah, like I said, taking that no BS approach to the markets, uh, being uh, very, very honest uh, with ourselves as traders. Uh, and, and yeah, just kind of seeing that other side. I mean, there's the one side of the beautiful cars and whatever there is, but you're not going to get there if, uh, if you don't put in the work, uh, and if your mindset and so on isn't right. So it's all about kind of bringing all of these factors together uh, and putting it on a plate and showing what that looks like every single day. I would say what I'm mostly working on now is since I have this Instagram background, I'm working on games. On there, I'm trying to help as many projects out there that reach out needs to look into how it is to really promote a crypto game to a massive gaming audience. And so, one of the games I like a lot, founder sitting right there, it's called Magic Draft. Beautiful game, at least I personally think so. Uh, but as well as just a lot of other projects in different niches, decentralized news, which is very really difficult to, to make, I would say, decentralized music NFT platforms, a lot of advising on these different things. Welcome. Sounds good. Uh, let the audience a little bit introduction to what you're working on right now. Hi everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm working on a token launchpad for brands and celebrities, and we build the whole ecosystem and provide them with a turnkey solution to launch their own tokens to to put themselves in the metaverse to draw free NFTs to the users. Something never existed and it's really, really complicated. And my head is exploding and I'm working on it every day. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, we've been working until 6 or 7 in the morning, so this is impressive to see you. Amazing, thank you. So now I can. Huge sacrifice for these beautiful people. Little bit, he was worth it. Amazing, thank you so much. I think now we'll welcome James to the stage to talk about magic. Hey everyone, hello um, Yes, yeah, so I'm the founder of Magic Club. I have a YouTube channel as well. It was Stock Guru, but now it's Crypto Guru because someone tried to do a trademark thing against me, but anyway. Um, the YouTube uh, project founder of Magicraft, it's a play to earn game. Um, the, the main reason I made Magicraft and CRT 
is because I'm a gamer and the games that were out already, like Max and Kunti and all these kind of things, like nice crypto projects, but I wouldn't say, like, I wouldn't play them as a game, so I wanted to make like the World of Warcraft or play their own games. And um, yeah, the project is amazing. We have uh, two huge studios working on the game. There's a team of like, more than 100 people, and a merger of crypto and gaming together. The reason I also wanted to open in crypto is since 2012, mining Bitcoin with a computer. And the main reason is because I think gaming, which has 3 billion people playing games around the world, um, once it's going to become crypto, it's going to merge with crypto. Every single game that you see, League of Legends, World of Warcraft, um, Final, all, all the main games, they're going to become crypto games. Even GTA, like why would you play a game and not earn money when that possibility is there with the merger of crypto and gaming? So it's going to take 3 billion people and bring them into crypto. And everyone will have wallets when they play these games. So it's really, gaming is going to make crypto mainstream. That's how I think it's really going to take off. It's already starting to become, you're starting to see it in the US, even in 2017, it was in the media. It's still got this idea of scam, but people are not all using it. It's like 200 million people using crypto at the moment. So not everyone is using it, but when 3 billion gamers start using crypto, they have their wallets on their phone, they have their characters on their phone, they have their GTA cards on their phone, they can sell and swap with their friends. It's going to bring half the world into crypto. And that's where it's going to set fire to the crypto space. And if you think prices of Bitcoin things like right now are high, imagine when 3 billion people around the world are using it. And that's where, that's the main reason for MCRT. Well, and I'm a gamer, so I want to make a game that I actually want to play, and that's awesome. And yeah, thank you. Amazing, thank you. Um, I, I do agree with you when it comes to gaming, bringing really, the adoption in this space as well. Now, I have on here Slavic, if you want to come and talk about what we're working on right now. You're on the paper, so come on up. Hello. <laughs> I don't uh, work in, uh, I work in one project right now, but it's too early to speak right now about. But uh, I want to say to everyone, I think it's the best time to do it right now in the crypto space. It's what I said the last time also. Uh, it's like if you build a new Google or a new Facebook uh, or a new social media right now. And uh, if you have the opportunity to make it, build it in this crypto space. Too. You will regret it if you don't do it right now. Amazing, thank you. I'm going to make a bunch of things. I saw you on your outfit today. Ah, uh, thank you. And we also have NFT at Shell.io as well to come and give us a little scoop on the NFT space. Welcome. <laughs> hey, welcome. Thank you. Beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for organizing it. So my story was sort of quickly in 2014, I got my first Bitcoin and I got scammed right away. I've lost everything in between four months. <laughs> so for me, as scarcity and knowledge in space is super important. And then um, I started with PCA and again Bitcoin and Ethereum ever since, uh, because I love the technology behind. I also love art, so in 2015 I started playing NFT. So when the technology provided such an opportunity, I jumped in full time. And since, since then I got scammed again. <laughs> Lost count. <laughs> so I decided to create a platform where I actually interview uh, creators. So if you are a creator and want to develop some of these, I invite on my channel and say, hey, show me who you are, show me your face. So to make sure that no one, no one gets scammed. I mean, I don't meet everyone physically, so there's always a chance to get scammed, but the percentage I think is lower because they keep their face next to their project. And I started about three months ago, I'm pretty close to 1,000 artists, so it's going pretty well. And I love every day. So, Amazing, thank you.